Welcome guys to day 5 of the $24 to $1000 challenge. Let's have a look into Hold the Manager, what went down exactly and show you guys the hands. Now, here we go with the first half and as you can see down here, this number is pretty good. $30 skyrocketing up in PLO2. Let's click rather quickly through, you know, these hands here that happened on this day. It's like for the big actually. So, here we got aces, squeeze. Set over set, easy game, even make the quads. We got aces against aces, three bet, pot, he calls, turn is a club, but the three of clubs, that really matters here because aces here, by the way, don't look at this hand, don't be the results are in it, but it really matters. Here, I obviously don't bet, check to my opponent, give him the opportunity to do bluff, he plays a 76% BPIP. I've seen tons of people jamming king 10 here, just some random queen, then just do some random shit. Now, when facing the champ here, the question is, do I have 33% equity, yes or no? Well, if he has a flush, if he has a boat, I'm dead. That's it. Here I have 3% against the flush. Um, I guess to chop it if the river is a 3, right? So, I'm dead if he has it. That's a problem. I'm about 30% equity short, um, maybe 29. So, when he doesn't have it, I have to have 90. And the question is, does he have it 70% or more? If not, then I have to make a call. I didn't believe him that he had it 70% of the time or more. So I made the call. I was wrong this time. He did have it, but I'm still fine with the decision against a player that plays 76% BPIP. Don't get me wrong. He has a ton amounts of flushes here, but when he does not, you're a huge favorite. And of course, a three beats you as well. But you know, people do random shit here, especially when playing a BPIP. I could fall against other people though. Okay. so. We got the ace queen. No, where are we? Play multi way pot with the ace nine six five double suited. Low SPR, money goes in, and the guy with the kings and deuces wins. Kind of, yeah. Marginal spot here. Calling with the open end straight around the over pair, making the nuts on the turn, raising, and then even making a better hand on the river against the turn set of ten spam opponent. Easy game. Ace queen. 3 9 double suited against Mixu, who goes ahead and puts in the 3 bet with the good old King Jack 9 6 rainbow, making the top 2 pair on this board. And unfortunately, it takes it down. Um, Ace 3 for 5. This is a tricky spot because my opponent actually decides to check the turn. I mean, betting 8 cents doesn't really count. And I have still 2 pair and a flush, which I call. And on the river, it gets kind of close. The fourth heart really makes it less likely he does have the Ace of Hearts. Even though you bet the flop, you know, it's less likely it just does it with a naked blocker. But I've seen people in on PL2 again to just, um, you know, randomly bet big on the river with, you know, sometimes even straights and really stupid stuff. Given that there's four houses on board and I have two in my hand, I think I still gonna have to make the call and not believe him that he has the nut flush 66% or more here. Um, or obviously a king high flush would be also possible. So. Um, here we got the aces again, money goes in, um, we take it down, aces one more time against kings, double suited, and here we definitely have a clear check on the flop and you evaluate. Now what happens here is really good because A alternative who has an SPR2 with us folds, and now really we have to ask ourselves the question, well, is it likely that Sir Richie is going to stack off here? And we cannot really probably tell from the flop. He donk bets definitely some percent of the time. So he sees some donk betting going on. Um, so you could think that, yeah, sometimes he might have a trap. But here the question is also, like, he is probably negative for me, you know, if he has a hand. However, do I have 33% of equity against this guy betting 12 cents? My answer was probably yes on average. This time I had 27. And I thought it was rather, you know, one of the worse scenarios of course like diamonds in the pair would be even worse but yeah spr of 1.1 1.2 ish so let's make the call here as well and it was like some equity percentage just short here we got good hand on the flop get it in take it down against a slightly weaker hand aces and jacks go all in on the flop have him being a massive dog here. Oh no, actually not. Sorry about that. On the turn, I bet one more time with enough flush. He has the second enough flush and a river jam. Just quite a nice scenario here, taking down a huge pot. 
East King Dunstu is double suited. Um, the flop bottom set could be tricky. You know, sometimes people are going to have a set of kings here. Uh, yeah, the money goes in here against... Oh, no, it doesn't. Not yet. Oh, it, got, it does. So we take it down here against a draw. And here we get the nut flush draw, which, you know, I don't like folding too much when the SPR is three. Unfortunately, he has a set. Is the SPR three really? Uh, it's a bit more, it's four. But I think I'm committed all in all. Check calling might have been a bit better. Luck to flush on a turn this time. Might have been a marginal hand here. Um, aces and sevens against other aces. We luck out and pink here as well. So here you can see definitely an upswing happening. Um, where the wrap call? Make the um, straight on a turn, raise him. And then on the river, he still doesn't want to fold. He just wants to bluff, um, even though it doesn't make any sense. Um, but yeah, we take down that seven dollars pot, seven sixty dollar pot. Pretty nice. Here we get three bet, obviously four bet. Call, all in on the flop, and he makes the flush. Ace king king, again. And uh, this time we flop great, barrel through, and get there on the river with a low SPR. I mean, he has a set of sixes and jack blocker. And still doesn't want to fall on the river though. Um, somewhat understandably though. Here we got Ace Queen A5 double suited, play a three bet squeeze pot. Pretty crazy guy. Double gutter, money goes in. Luck on the river as we make a straight. Um, Ace is here again against Ace King King 5. We bet with the nut flush draw. Make an additional open ender in a turn, bet one more time. Get raised here, get it in with 47% three way and take down the whole pot. Um, jacks make the nuts on the flop, just call, bet big on the turn. And he has only 16 cents behind. Here, I mean, maybe I should just show off the 16 cent, but whatever. Go ahead and call um, or check behind, basically. Doesn't make a big difference, I guess. Um, Ace is here against a weak hand and probably check calling this one. Yep, and we turn one of the desired cards. You know, we make the gut shot and the diamond draw, which I go ahead and check, shove an SPR 3 turn, um, which seems fine. I mean, at 38% here, and I'm up against pretty okay hand. Could be a bit weaker. Check calling might have been an option too. Um, he has an 80% range. Yeah, he could have 6 4 as well, which would have been pretty bad for me. But yeah, go ahead and see the river, which, you know, he makes a boat and takes down a $7 pot. Not an easy situation. Uh, here we got the King Queen Jack 8 double suited, raise call, and then flop the goods on this 883 board against Rainbow Aces. Um, aces here again and uh, make the nuts. That's pretty tricky here. I went ahead and bet and then even called the min raise. Um, he didn't just shove the last 19 cents, which I guess is good because I probably wouldn't have folded. Now, the thing is here, um, I didn't think that he was gonna have a lot of, you know, boats on the river. Because, I mean, he still has to call it two-thirds pot as bet with a two-pair, which is obviously atrocious for the price that he's offered. Like, he should only call having a set or, you know, some, like, a flush plus two-pair something. So on the river, even though 9-7 gets there, I think it was unlikely to begin with that he was peeling 9-7, which was wrong in this case. And I just wanted to value bet against, you know, lower flushes. Then once he min-raises, maybe you can get away from it. Um... But again, you're getting insane odds of one in six, and it's not really impossible that he does something really stupid here. So, stupidity might be just 5%. However, I'm just okay with the decision. Not super happy about it in the end, but I think, you know, on a deuce or a four, you could just go ahead and check and then call a bet, I guess. Um, instead of back calling. So here, backfolding wouldn't be yours though. So here we got a pretty great hand. 
and on the river we even make the nuts and he folds with a low SPR, fortunately. Money goes in here with the wrap and top pair against top two. And uh, here we got kings in an SPR of one and two with him. And I have doubles to the kings and I actually hit a pair and a second nut flush draw, which usually is a stack off here, right? I mean, SPR one and SPR two shouldn't be a big deal. Unfortunately, we have 5% of equity get maximum punished here. Um, which I cannot be too happy about. I mean, this is quite unlucky, but it happens. And overall, I'm running pretty good at first. Here as well, a little bit unlucky that I run into a top set with the over pair plus open ender, which is a pretty good hand on this board. Then kings, I'm gonna peel one on the flop. And then as you can see, we're facing a pretty weird opponent. You can see his barrel frequencies are 96, 90, 80. So if you're facing a guy like that with these stats, and these are quite reliable, right? I mean, he's just betting. Um, I got 400 hands on him. You just have to call down sometimes, which I do here. Um, I still got a pretty good hand from this run out if you think he's just randomly barreling off with shit. And I only need to be good one in three times, which I think is true here. So I take down a pot. You can't always fold. Um, Aces here. I think that was a pretty good example, by the way. Aces against uh, some weird hand, taking it down. And here we get top pair in the flush draw, which is a great hand. Making even a two pair in the turn, putting in the rest, getting caught by a pretty legitimate hand here as well, and taking it down. Kings, um, this is pretty tough. I went go for the check call and then still check call on the river. Um, because I have a jack. If I don't have a jack, I'm folding. However, when I'm blocking it, um, even though I have clubs in my hand, which is not that good, and I have, you know, just the hand that's below the straight, right, which is top set, and the blocker, I'm usually not folding, which I didn't. He did have the nuts. Also, again, worth mentioning, 90% range. Um, so his range is all over the board. He definitely has a lot of rainbow queens, rainbow... Um, maybe even some rainbow chaps, even though the blocker obviously doesn't help there, but yeah, usually it helps to have a jack blocker, him having less straights, and yeah, I think that's a call. Here, I go ahead and check raise, get called, and yeah, the money goes in on the river, and we're good. Ace King King here, again, pretty strong hand. We got an SPR of 10, we got an over pair, we got bottom pair and we got a nut flush draw. Unfortunately, our opponent here has middle set. Again, 92% range before the flop. It's really hard for wide ranges to make good hands because wide ranges have less sets. I mean, they have more bottom set, more mid sets and tight ranges. However, they also have a ton more of two pairs, um, pair plus flush draw, etc. And I'm dominating all of that. So, you know, this is just a clear stack off and I you know, have to be a little bit more get it in happy against those people. And all in all, it worked out quite well yesterday. Um, here we got the second nuts. No, we actually got it in pretty, pretty good, right? 45% three way, you can see pretty good situation and we win. Here we got the ace, queen, jack, ace, king, queen, jack, pretty good flop. Um, as you can see, 42% still, even though our opponent has two pair. That might surprise you, but the nut flush draw plus all these spectral draws is worth a lot. And we make one of those spectral draws. And yeah, we could have even been a favorite there, to be honest, with the ace high and that draw. Um, Queens, unfortunately against us here in, again, uh, SVR3. No way I can get away from aces and sixes here. And uh, unfortunately gets stacked. Ace king, queen seven, turn the nuts. And the money goes in on the river. It's nice from him that he actually also bluffed there. And we make the top two here in three way situation. Money goes in. We make a boat on the river against two people. Is King Jack six. By the way, if you if you need a little bit longer, just pause the video. Just look at the board. Um, and then you can see it a bit better. Um, yeah, this is one of the hands I'm probably not so happy with. It's four way. Sure, there's a lot of draws and, you know, there's definitely some turns that I can be folding on, like a 
No, it's actually not because I have a six. You know, a six would be a really bad return card, but I will make two pair, which is really awkward. So I'm basically hoping for those two backdoor flush draws or a complete blank, like a two, three, whatever. And just hope that he has a draw. The Espear is obviously low. And then unfortunately, also someone did flop a set here, which, you know, not always happens, right? And I was somewhat right on this guy. So I had him beat. He did have only a pair and a draw. And... Um, and said I'm doing fine, but yeah, I mean, he could probably also fold, it's close, but I don't want to be two results or anything there either. Super insane hand here, top set, um, not flush draw, gut shot, that dominates the 7-5, taking it down. Good hand here on the button, not great hand, but we do make a top two. The boat's up on the river, here I think we have a raise, he calls with weaker so we were right that it's you know not just a race with uh, better hands there so um aces against king queen four nine double suited uh i don't know what happened here but oh we went for the triple barrel that's actually pretty good because once you don't have the king of hearts it's more likely that he has to, that those um king i flush draws right if you have the king of hearts you cannot have those hands and it's more likely you might have something else that doesn't pay you off on the river. Uh, but yeah, we get some maximum payoff here by also a very loose player. And we have the trips versus trips, get the money in. And it's all good on the river as we free roll. So this has been the first half. And if you wonder, you know, how we lost it all again at PLO 5. It's a bit less hands, don't worry. It's not going to be too long. We only played for 13 minutes and immediately have to move down. Let's hear, see what happened. Aces and fours. All in pre-flop against ace, queen, 10, 9. We lose. We got the ace, check, 10, 8. We definitely have to call here against two players with... I mean, maybe he's not having a very wide range, but still going to be the right play. And here on the turn, we make the nut flush turn the gutter. So we shove. He has unfortunately a great hand. Also blockers two hour outs. Takes on a pot, not much we can do. Here, this is marginal, but I'm decided to peel and then stack off on most turns. Like, yeah, some of them might not be that good. Like a five, for example, right? Wouldn't be too good for us in case, well, maybe we shouldn't even peel and fold. But on the 10, we definitely stack off. Unfortunately, he has the better two pair on the flop. But we had a good redraw against that on the flop. As you can see, 40% it was, so not that bad. And we could have definitely been ahead against some straight draws. Um, ace, queen, jack, five against our aces. Goes out and makes two pair on the turn. That's not so nice. We have 64 on the flop. And on a turn with 10 cents behind, yeah, he makes it. Cannot do much here. Sevens and deuces, this is one of the hands that definitely wouldn't be a call here on the small blind because exactly this happens so much in multi-way situations. This hand gets wrecked and gets set over set it so often. However, I thought that, okay, if people are playing 80% of hands, chances that they have actually paired hands that make higher sets go down drastically. And um, against some people, I could get away from it. But against the 77, 47, 12 guy um, that, you know, opened from under the gun with 70% of range. I don't think I can get away if he calls my flop bet. I just have to get it in on the turn. Also funny to see that he actually did slow play in the end, even though he has such crappy stats to begin with. So I guess even those guys know that. A little bit unlucky, of course. Um, but yeah, could have also just folded pre. Wouldn't mind that at all. Mm, here we have a flip, lose it. Ace King King 6. Also, don't see how I can get away from it in a SPR of 3. I have still a decent hand. It's 40% against his hand here. It's just top bottom pair. Mm. Ace King Queen 5. I'm playing again and scans this Luis dude from Brazil. Again, I don't see how I can get away from a hand in an SPR of 2. I actually was just playing this to, to hit a reasonable board because also when you check his stats, 150 hands, 
He doesn't see bet like, I mean, in position, he see bet's a bit unreasonable. So you cannot say much about this because it's just 17 spots. However, his range is super stupid. And then top pair uh, with, you know, a great kicker in the back to flush and the gut shot is, you know, a stack off here. It's just, there's nothing debatable about it, about against, you know, such wide ranges. Um, here we got aces with a draw. And, you know, in the book, this is a race and we go out for the race. So he has Luis Brazil. Dude has again trips wrecked by Brazil. Easy game today or yesterday. And then again, we do get wrecked by one single player on PLO5. Luis 381 EAB makes bottom set and a flush draw. Sometimes it's just not your day. Um, he must have feel really great about his play. <laughs> uh, easy game all the way. Here, 58% is 0% on the river. And ace 10, 10, 6, bottom set is bad on the turn. We still have to stack off though. With 25% of equity, which we get the right pot odds for. Unfortunately, zero on the river. We got the aces, we squeeze, we got it in good. And this time we win. And as you can see, this is it. This has been a loss of $22. Most of it went to one guy, one genius. I mean, the sevens was also against him. So yeah, he must have had the run of his life, which is good for him, you know. He had a good day winning about 500 big blinds like the likelihood of a player like him winning 500 big blinds is probably less than one percent because he plays 80 50 12 easy game though happens also at live poker sometimes and that's it um hope you guys enjoyed this review and i see you guys later today for the day six of the bankroll challenge hopefully the next time i play plo5 i'm not gonna lose five binds or four and a half binds, that would be pretty great. Also short stack, that was basically the strategy to begin with because I think short stacking is still gonna be better to take shots at just a higher limit when you have those bankroll challenges. Thanks for watching today. Don't forget to hit those thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you like the content. Thanks guys and see you next time.